After her son's son was born, she spent the next 14 months as a primary caregiver to the little guy, Ajene, AJ, they called him. But that changed when the baby's mother, who never married the father, took the little guy down to Santa Rosa, Texas. Still, Grandma stayed in his life. And when he was old enough to travel, would fly him up here about once every year. One stay stretched to two full years. But AJ's relationship with his dad, Stan, was strained. He went back to Texas. He was just 12 when his mother hanged herself down there. AJ was sent into foster care. He'd later get into some trouble, spent some time incarcerated, and tragically, battling depression and possibly other mental, mental illness, tied a sheet to a balcony railing, and like his mom, hung himself. Earlene Belcher, who is known as Queen Cookie, is that grandma who stayed in her grandson's life until that life was gone. She commissioned a documentary about AJ's troubled life, which you can see on Amazon Prime. I watched it this week, A Cry for Help, Arjane Burt's story. Welcome to the program. AJ was crying for help. Who, Earlene, who either didn't hear that cry or heard it but didn't act on it? I think most of um, his family didn't understand the cry. I don't think they did. They looked at him as a troubled child, and they didn't take the time to get to know who A.J. really was and hear his heart crying for help. But you had, and you had made that a purpose of yours. I mean, that had to rip your heart out when after caring for the, the, the infant in up to, what, 14 months or so, mm -hmm. and now he's time zones and states mm -hmm. away. But you stayed in his life, and even while in prison, I saw in the documentary, A.J. wrote to you, he did know of your love mm -hmm. for him. But with his dad, that was a different story. Mm -hmm. And I don't even know how to explain that story because it's not my place to explain it. Yeah. The only one that can explain it is Ajene, who is not here, and of course his dad. When A.J.'s mom took her life, he had other siblings by then, right? By her and another dad, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. But those siblings all went to family members. Mm -hmm. A.J. did not. He went into the foster care system. Mm -hmm. Why? Do we know? I really think that um, he was, try he was um, trying to get placed into his father's home, number one. It really, that really aided him, didn't it? That, yes, the whole it foster did. care thing. That yes, his, it did. That his siblings went to family members and he was yeah. put into the foster care system. And believe me, I'm not knocking foster care. Thank you for being out there to help so many kids. You had this idea and made it a reality to document this story, as painful mm -hmm. and as powerful as it is, into a long form video, a documentary. For what purpose? I am here to, I call it a mission of love, Jerry. Yeah. I'm trying to help others because it's almost like. AJ was failed, he was failed. And I'm trying to get others to see when you see a loved one crying for help, whether it's your children, your grandchildren, a sibling, try to reach out. You might not be able to help them, but give them a chance. Yeah. My wife and I watched the documentary together. You and I had talked on the phone, you've been down uh, in, in Atlanta talking about this story. We both, Early and just came away feeling that this young man slipped through so many cracks on so many occasions. Did he? Yes, he did. And it's, it's not one person's fault. No. It's not two people's fault. It's a combination of people that tended to have just turned a blind eye. Uh, they didn't see him crying for help. I mean, he became a cutter, if you know what a cutter is. Talk, tell my audience about that. Uh, a cutter is when teenagers... Um, they cut their wrists. They'll either get knives or razor blades or something. Heard about that. And they're trying to cut out the emotional, mental pain by physically harming themselves. Replace that mental pain with a physical pain. Yes, yes, yes. And, and I he was never... doing that. I'm sorry? He was doing that. Yes, he was. And I had never heard of that until he was in foster care. Those, he would be, when they say kids at risk, his picture could be right there beside the definition of the dictionary, right? Because mm -hmm. on all these different levels, family mm -hmm. and otherwise, he was a kid at risk. So many of those kids get into drugs, alcohol. Did that apply here? Yes. 
because he watched it growing up. His mother was an alcoholic and a drug addict. She uh, did domestic violence with her and her partner. Yeah. And he watched that as a young child. So he took on some of those same attributes when he became a young adolescent. Mm -hmm. I understand at about 13 years old, he so started trying So much stuff trying. came his way. Yes. All right, we're going to pick it up there because I'm not going to leave this at a tragedy. It is. But Queen Cookie is not leaving it sit there as a tragedy either. She's doing something about it. We're going to pick up on that when we come back on Leading Edge.